Describe for the jury what you saw when you looked at the photographs of the clothing that Mr. Martin had and the photographs of the wound to his skin and the gun shot or the tattooing that was referenced in the autopsy report. Can you put all that together for us? Yes, sir. The photographs show a contact discharge of a weapon against the clothing. And this I agree 100% with the firearms examiner, that at the time of discharge, the gun was against the clothing. The gas came out, tore the clothing. There's a defect and there's tears from it. There's the positive soot all around it. And so what you know is that the muzzle was in contact with the clothing at the time of discharge. And again, this is what the firearms examiner said, and she also did, I believe, some experiments proving that. When you look at the wound in the chest, there's a different picture. The wound in the chest was about an inch to the left of the midline, half an inch below the level of the nipples. And what you had was a circular punched out wound, which is an entrance, but it lay in an area of powder tattooing measuring two inches by two inches. Now, powder tattooing are marks on the skin due to powder grains that come out the muzzle of the gun. They're not powder burns. People use the term powder burns, but it means a whole bunch of different things. This is very specific. When the powder grain comes out of the barrel and the barrel is close enough to the body, that grain of powder hits the skin and produces a mark and a reaction, a reddish color reaction. And these marks are called powder tattoo marks. Some people call them, use other terms, but powder tattoo marks. They use the term stippling, but I prefer powder tattoo marks. And this indicates that a grain of powder has hit the skin and the person was alive at the time. You do not get true powder tattoo marks in dead people. And there was a distribution measuring two inches by two inches and a certain density in these tattoo marks. And this indicated that the gun was not against the skin. It was not a half inch away. It was more than an inch. And based upon the concentration of the marks and the size of a pattern, it's my opinion that the muzzle of the gun in this case was two to four inches away from the skin. So the barrel of the gun was against the clothing. The muzzle of the gun was against the clothing. But the clothing itself had to be two to four inches away from the body. If you look, what you see is the hole produced by the bullet. And that's essentially a punched out type entrance. And then all around the entrance, you see these old little marks, almost like flea bites or ant bites, not fire ants, but regular ants, little bite marks all around. And these are powder tattoo marks. And because they're red and reddish brown, that indicates the person was alive. And if you notice, there's a variation in the density. And there's a measurement of about two inches by two inches, according to the autopsy report. This indicates, again, that he was alive at the time he was shot. And that the muzzle was not in contact, but had to be back. The first time you see powder tattoo marks is when the muzzle is a half inch away. Less than half inch, you don't see tattoo marks. And then as you begin to move the barrel away, the area of tattooing begins to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then as it increases in range, your density will decrease. This is a fairly heavy density. So you know it's less than six inches and such. 
and the density decreases until finally the tattoo marks disappear. This, this is ball powder, most probably flattened ball. It would disappear from bare skin at about three feet. But by the size, the density, this is close, somewhere between two and four inches. Were you aware that Mr. Zimmerman said that Trayvon Martin was straddling him? Yes, sir. And leaning over him? Yes, sir. And that Mr. Zimmerman had the gun in his right hand? Yes, sir. And if you would describe then what you know about that sequence of events compared with the medical uh, forensic and gunshot evidence. The medical evidence, the gunshot wound, the tattooing, is consistent with his opinion, with his statement as to that. And the reason it is, is, is don't forget, the simplest thing is the gun is in his right hand. So if you're going to shoot somebody and you're right-handed and you're really close to them, the, uh, this, the natural inclination to, with the twist, the hand, that the bullet will tend to go from the deceased left to his right, okay? But that's a minor point. The most important point is the nature of the defect in the clothing and the powder tattooing. That is, if you lean over somebody, you will notice that the clothing tends to fall away from the chest. If instead you're lying on your back and somebody shoots you, the clothing is going to be against your chest. So that the fact that the, we know the clothing was two to four inches away is consistent with somebody leaning over the person doing the shooting and that the clothing is two to four inches away from the person firing. 